Geronimo Stilton, Lost Treasure of the Emerald Eye. This is the first book of the Geronimo Stilton series. I used to love these books when I was a kid. Late again. Putrid cheese puffs. It was nine o'clock and I, Geronimo Stilton, was late for work again. I rolled out of bed in a minute and was dressed in two. Pretty fast, considering I am really not a morning per morning mouse. <laughs> Cheese slices. I hate Monday mornings. I grumbled while brushing my teeth with cheddar-flavored toothpaste. Then I hurried downstairs, stumbled over my tail, and tumbled all the way down to the door. Thump, thump, thump. So much for being, a, being quiet as a mouse. The streets of New Mouse City, the capital of Mouse Island, were as noisy as ever. I guess everyone was late, just like me. Cheese delivery trucks were everywhere. Horns blasting. Mice, rats, and rodents of every size and shape raced by in cars, taxis, and Mouse Jordan sneakers. Taxi, I shouted, jumping into a cab. 17, Swiss Cheese Center. Minutes later, we pulled up to my editorial office. Oh yes, I forgot to tell you that I run a newspaper. It's called the Rodent Gazette. I took the stairs two at a time and burst inside. What a workout. I was pooped. Maybe I shouldn't have canceled the membership at Rats La Lane after all. But before I could think about it, Musella, my secretary, tackled me. Or maybe it's Mausella. Before I could think about it, Mausella, my secretary, tackled me. Mr. Stilton, finally, she cried, her glasses dangling off one ear. There is a crowd of rodents waiting to see you. The designers, the printers, the mouse who works the water cooler, and the editor-in-chief wants to speak with you immediately. I headed to my desk. Mousella followed. The copy machine is jammed, she continued. Another mailroom mouse quit. And boss, don't forget you promised me a raise. My head felt like it was about to explode. Even my whiskers hurt. I wouldn't wish this day on the meanest cat ever. I hate Mondays. Thea's Secret At lunchtime, my sister Thea, who is a special correspondent for the Rodents Gazette, came by on her motorcycle. I'm taking you out to lunch, she said. We've got reservations at the Mouse House. She grabbed my paw and whispered, I have to tell you a very important secret. Twenty minutes later, I peeled myself off Thea's motorcycle. My teeth were still chattering. Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I shrieked, tugging my whiskers back into shape. Why, why, why do you have to go so fast? It's dangerous. One day, we're going to end up ship sipping cheese through straws at Mouse General. Set. Still the same old Freddy mouse, my sister laughed, slipping into the restaurant. Of course, before we could sit down, Thea had to meet, greet 50 friends. Hi, Ratsy, how are you doing, Swissita? I rolled my eyes. Thea had more friends than a cheese delivery man the day before Thanksgiving. Finally, we were seated. So what is it? I asked impatiently, but my sister was busy looking at the menu. Why don't we order first, she said. Cheddar ravioli for two, she told the waiter, with extra spicy tomato sauce. Spicy, I groaned. You know I get heartburn. Did I mention my sister can be incredibly annoying at times? Thea waved her paw. Oh, please, you could use a little spice in your life. Besides, you'll have to get used to eating all sorts of food on our trip, she whispered, winking at me. Trip? What trip? I asked. Shh, shh, do you want everyone, to, everybody to know, she said, pinching my tail. Well, what are you talking about, I hissed. Thea glanced around. Hold your whiskers. I think the waiter may, may be spying on us. He looks a little suspicious, she said. Who on earth would want to spy on us, I cried. My head started to pound. If only you knew, if you only knew, my sister replied, looking very mysterious. I clenched my fists. I couldn't take it anymore. I climbed into my, onto my chair and screamed, What are you talking about? Everyone stared.
Slimy Swiss balls. Somebody got up on the wrong side of the hole today, said Thea, but she began talking anyway. I found a map of an island showing the spot. Where treasure is buried, she squeaked the emerald eye. From under the table, she pulled out a yellowed piece of paper. I found this map at the flea market, she continued. Oh, Garykins, you must come with me. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance, she finished excitedly. First of all, don't call me Jerrykins. My name is Geronimo, I cried. Second, I will be too busy at work. We are about to publish the next volume of Rodent Rules for Dummies. And besides, who ever heard of an emerald eye? It's ridiculous. Thea grabbed my paw and stared straight into my eyes. But you're my big brother. You can't let me go on my own. Jerry Berry, she squeaked in her sweetest voice. My sister could, con- could convince a cat to cook dinner for her. My name is Geronimo, I shouted. That night, I drank about ten cups of snoozy time tea. I listened to my squeaky sounds, sleep tape, and counted grilled cheese sandwiches. Still, I didn't sleep one wink. Let's go back to the map now. Very cool. It says Buccaneer Cove, Moore Water Bay, Half Moon Bay. Oh, we live near Half Moon Bay. Sleepy Cat's Pass, Pirate's Peak. What's the point, Peak? Mm, what does it say? Mole Hill Mountain, Hard as Nails Hill, Whispering Woods, Bandit's Bay, Flea Ridden, F- Flea Ridden Fur River, Mouse's Meadow, Cat's Claw Rock. X marks the spot of the Emerald Eye. So it's over here. Let's see what happens next. Cheap junk for less. For less. The next morning we went to the harbor. So, Jerrykins, promise you'll come with me? You are not going to let me sail off all on my own, insisted Thea. Don't call me Jerrykins, I cried. My name is Geronimo. Here's one thing you should know about my sister. When she gets an idea in her head, it sticks like a mouse in a glue trap. Before I knew it, I had promised to go with her on her ridiculous treasure hunting trip. And as every respectable mouse knows, a rodent's promise is nothing to joke about. Chewy cheese bits, shouted Thea, pointing, breaking into a dance. Then Thea showed me a boat belonging to an old, retired sea captain. It was the color of cheddar, extra sharp, my favorite. The ship's name seemed to be a good sign, too. Lucky lady. My sister stared at the ship. Then she winked at me. You know, two sailors are really not enough for this boat. She said, do you know who else could come with us? Trap. He says he's an expert sailor. Sailor, 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 sailor. My memories of my cousin Trap. Stilton, also known as Pushy Paws, were not very good. When he was young, he was a real nightmare. Trap, I sputtered. But Thea, don't you remember when he tied my tail up in a knot? I had to wear the same pants for a week. And what about the time he dyed my whiskers with that purple grape juice? But as I said, when my sister gets an idea in her head, there is no stopping her. Minutes later, we stood in front of Trap's thrift shop, cheap junk for less. The store window was dusty and full of odd stuff. An old yellowed photograph, a fake crystal that was supposed to ward off cats, a box of silver whisker curlers, a super-powered fur dryer. We went in. As the door opened, it triggered a bunch of small brass bells hanging from the ceiling. Inside, the plumpish mouse with with short paws and a pencil tucked behind his ear sat with his feet up on a comfy reclining chair. He wore baggy blue pants and a pair of bright red suspenders. It was Trap. He leaped up and scurried toward toward us with surprising speed. Well, I'll be a mouse's uncle, he shouted, crushing my paw in his. Long time no see. You two are always together, huh? Like cream and cheese. So what's up? Want to buy something? Let me tell you. Right up front, no discounts. Not even to relatives. Cash only, he shouted in our ears. Is there somewhere quiet we can talk? Asked Thea. Trap led us into a library filled with books on every subject, 
Cats, cheese, cats who eat cheese, and the mice who love them. The air smelled musty, as if the windows hadn't been opened since Christopher Columb... Columb Mouse, huh? Discovered Mouse Island. The word musty here kind of means, like, it smells old. Like, when you open something that hasn't been opened in a long time, it smells pretty old. So the air smelled musty, as if the windows hadn't been opened since Christopher Columb Mouse discovered Mouse Island. All of a sudden, we heard a horrifying sound. Meow! Leah, Thea, and I leaped up in the air. Meow! Cat! We shrieked together. Trap rolled around on the floor in a fit of laughter. Ha ha ha, he sputtered. That's no cat. It's just a tape recording. It comes on automatically as soon as someone enters a library. Pretty cute, don't you think? Adorable, squeaked Thea, rolling her eyes. Well, it does help. It does keep rat burglars away and slimy sewer rats, too, smirked Trap. Hmm, I wonder if I could take out a patent on it, he added. A patent is something that you take out on inventions so that you want to say that you invented it. So you you send and you get a patent for it. So he invented this um, cat the cat alarm and so he's saying it does keep up rat burglars away and slimy sewer rats too i wonder if i could take out a patent on it he added i could just hear the wheels turning in his tiny mouse-sized brain i could make a bundle he mumbled his eyes shining then he turned back to us so anyway what are you two looking for i don't have much time to shoot the cheese i'm a very busy mouse you know he added with pride, puffing up his fur. Trap listened to Thea's plans with half-closed eyes. But I could tell he was interested because his tail started to twitch when she mentioned the emerald eye. Okay, I'll join you, he agreed. But anyone who dares to lay a paw on the, my part of the treasure is a dead rat. We toasted to a successful trip, and twisting our tails together, we squeaked, To our trip! Friends together! Mice forever! Take me with you. On my way home, I stop by to say hello to my favorite nephew, Benjamin. He's a cute little guy with tiny, flappy ears. Uncle, read me a story, he cried when he saw me. So I sat down on the big, comfy chair in the den. Ben loves stories. When he was younger, he always zonked out before I had a chance to finish my tale. Hmm, I wonder what zonked out means. When he was younger, he always zonked out before I had a chance to finish my tale. I think it means to fall asleep. Zonked out. Right, because he's falling asleep before Geronimo Stilton finishes the tale. That's why I dedicated my book, Stilton's Cheesy Tales for Tiny Mice, to him. To Ben, I wrote, may you stay awake long enough to finish this book. Oh, we were right. He's falling, he falls asleep sometimes, and he wants him to stay awake. Today, I can hardly believe my little nephew is already nine years old. I remember when he was just a squeaky little thing, drinking cheese sauce from a baby bottle. You're going on a trip? Ben asked when he heard about my plans. Oh, please, please, please take me with you, Uncle. I can be your assistant. I can carry your notebooks, and I can sharpen your pencils with my cat tooth pencil sharpener, he pleaded. Sorry, Ben, I said, ruffling his fur. Maybe next time when you're a little older. Then I laid my right paw on my heart and tugged my whiskers with my left paw. This is a salute that we mice use on special occasions. It means that the hearts of two mice who love each other will always stay connected. The hearts of two mice who love each other will always stay connected. Anything missing? 15 pounds of extra sharp, extra sharp cheddar, 80 boxes of mac and cheese, 10 tubs of Swiss, 9 bags of nacho cheese chips unsalted. The next morning, I stood on the deck of the lucky lady, reading out a list of our supplies. What a mess. Trap, fill up the water tank, I instructed my cousin. But instead of filling the water tank, he poured water into the fuel tank. What are you doing? I squeaked. I think you had better lay off the extra sharp. It seems to be affecting your brain. I turned to my sister. Thea, run and get me a compass. I ordered down on boats, masts, and beyond. Asked to see the owner, Squeaky LaRue, also known as the Squeak, 
He's a friend of mine, so he should give you a discount. You can't miss him. He's a tall, thin, gray mouse with a tail so furry you could use it to dust every room in your mouse hole. Just then, I noticed Trap talking to the young ship rat on the boat next to ours. That's right, my young rat friend. He whispered, don't tell anyone. We're looking for something, but I can't tell you what. It begins with a T and ends with an E. That's right, it's on an island. Quick as a mouse... Quick as a cat at a mouse convention, I leaped up and yanked Trap away by the tail. Are you going to blurt out the whole story about the treasure? I hissed. A convention is an org- is like a group of people getting together for like a, um, a meeting kind of, a convention. So quick as a ma- cat at a mouse convention. Trap gave me an innocent smile. Did I mention a treasure? There are lots of words that begin with a T and end with an E. You know. He smirked, telephone, for example, or how about tic-tac-toe? I banged my head against the side of the ship. By six o'clock that night, we had finished loading. I rushed to Rat's Authority, the best store in town for sporting goods. Can you help me, please? I said to Scratch, the mouse who owns the place. I want to get everything I would need for a long sea voyage, and I'm in a big rush, so if you could hurry... Well, tickle me with the cat fur feather. If it isn't Geronimo Stilton, the newspaper mouse, Scratch cried. What an honor. He then began to drag out everything in the entire store. My head was spinning. There were ten pairs of waterproof underwear, a floppy, checkered colored straw hat that squeaked if you stayed out in the sun too young, too long, and a life raft shaped like a slice of cheese on a five foot long cracker. I also need a suitcase, I said to Scratch, or better yet, a big trunk. I've got just the thing for a sharp mouse like you, Mr. Stilton, he remarked, his eyes gleaming. Follow me. He led me to the back of the store, where he unlocked the door to the small room. Then, like the famous magician Harry Rattini, he lifted a silk clock with a flourish. There stood a trunk as tall as a circus mouse on stilts. Stilts are those things that people in the circus stand on to make them very, very tall. They're like long sticks. There stood a trunk as tall as a circus mouse on stilts. It was covered in bright yellow leather that glowed in the dark. It was as wide as a giant from Rat and the Beanstalk and as long as a line for cheese danish at the bakery on Sunday morning. Isn't it a beauty? asked Scratch. I nodded and carefully lifted the lid. Holy cheese, you could fit a sumo mouse inside. I spotted several coat hangers made of cheesecloth and a whole shelf just for hats. There was a shiny cat tooth comb and a wire brush for tough whiskers. The trunk also had a space for office supplies, paper, pens, paperweights, a tiny, tiny secret compartment, you name it. I'll take it, I squeaked. I knew you would like it, Mr. Stilton. This is the real deal, he beamed, running his paw over the trunk. It's just a thing for an adventurous, sea-going mouse such as yourself. Wish you could take me along. Hmm. Geronimo Stilton, fearless sailor of the high seas, I thought. Had a nice ring to it. I just might enjoy this trip after all. Oh! (laughs) It says, ah, that salty smell of seaweed. First dawn at sea. Ah, the cool breeze blowing off in the sea. Ah, that salty smell of seaweed. I was starting to get into the sailing thing. It was so relaxing. Sort of like sitting in Great Grandma Tanglefur's rocking chair. Holding the tiller of the lucky lady in my paws, I stared out over the ocean waves. It was dawn, and the sun was coming up, was just coming up pale as a slice of Swiss cheese. We had just left the bar- the harbor, but I felt as if I'd been sailing all my life. I was wearing a bright yellow windbreaker jacket with matching yellow pants and my new yellow hat. Can you guess what my favorite color is? Yup, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like a little yellow to cheer up a mouse. It is the most popular color on our island. We have yellow cars, yellow schools, and yellow airplanes. In fact, once a, one year, even Santa Mouse wore a yellow suit instead of a red one. My nephew Ben wasn't too crazy about that, though. I smiled. I missed Ben so much. 
Funny how such a small mouse could give you such a big heartache. My daydreams were interrupted by Trap. He approached on deck, munching on a bag of nacho cheese chips. Hey there, cousin. He squeaked with his mouth full. Want some? Be careful, I want. Don't get any grease on the deck. You're such a worry wart, he muttered, laying his greasy paw right on the deck. I closed my eyes and counted to ten. Just bring me my chart, I sighed. I need to see if we are on course for Treasure Island. Hey, no problem, oh my little cousin, squeaked Chop, waving a life buoy at me. He did a little dance. Look out, I shrieked. You almost stepped on my glasses. I broke out in a cold sweat. Without my glasses, I couldn't tell the difference between a slice of mozzarella and a hunk of cheddar. Why, oh why had we brought him along? Fresh clams, anyone? It was evening, and the red sun sat on the ocean like a cherry on top of a piece of cheesecake. Up in the sky, white fluffy clouds of whipped cream floated around. What a delicious view, I sighed. But just as I was beginning to enjoy it, I heard a mouse screaming. Yowie, that rotten stove is trying to kill me. It was my cousin's voice. Thea and I rushed to help him. What happened? What is it? We we squeaked together. Chap was leaping around up on one paw. This rotten stove keeps jumping up and down like a teenage mouse at a Wild Whiskers concert, shrieked my cousin, massaging his toe. I burned my paw with the clam sauce. He slumped onto the padded sofa to check out his toe. Maybe you two can set the table, at least, Trap continued. While you've been up on deck enjoying the fresh air, I've been busting my tail down here. He closed his eyes and yawned. Must I do everything? I gave the clam sauce a good sniff as Thea mixed it into the pasta. Now I know why in medieval times they poured boiling oil on their enemies from the castle walls, whined my cousin. Medieval times are times long ago. Um, it's mostly in in Europe. People used to have castles and ride horses and stuff. In different parts of the world, medieval times look different. But what we know, what we imagine when we think of medieval times, is times when there was castles and people and like knights and people wore armor and people rode horses. That's what he's talking about. In medieval times, they poured boiling oil on their enemies from the castle from the castle walls. He cradled his burned paw protectively. Why, Trap, I didn't know you were so cultured, I remarked, filling my plate. My my cousin smirked. What culture? I got that from a cartoon on TV, he scoffed. You can find everything on TV, you know. Yes, of course you can, I answered absent-mindedly. Let's see, think about this word. Absent-mindedly. Hmm, if your mind is absent... I think you're not thinking about what you're saying. So he says, yes, of course you can, I answered absent-mindedly. I was sniffing at the sauce again. Are you sure these clams are fresh? What do you mean fresh? Of course they're fresh, Trap insisted. Cross my heart. It's just that they smell sort of like a skunk at the cheap perfume counter, I offered. My My cousin jumped off of the sofa. Are you calling me a liar, he shouted. I told you they were fresh as fresh can be. If you don't believe me, fine. I guess you can. You just enjoy hurting my feelings. Thea grabbed a slice of bread and headed for the stairs. It's my turn to stand watch, she chirped, racing away. I hesitated for a moment, then began to eat very slowly. I don't think I'll have any clams after all. I've lost my appetite, said Tripp, nibbling some bread and cheese. At two o'clock that morning, I woke up with a horrible stomach ache. I dashed to the bathroom, my glasses dangling off my snout. Seconds later, I tripped over the bath mat, banging, banged my snout on the medicine cabinet. This is a snout, right? Banged my snout on the medicine cabinet and plopped onto the toilet. Suddenly, I had a horrible thought. Could it be the clams that had made me sick? Just then, the bathroom door opened wide. Looking half asleep, Trapped peered into the bathroom. Then he covered his nose with both paws. What are you up to? Building some kind of stink bomb? He coughed. Thea, woken up by all the noise, joined us. She sized up the situation in an instant. Sizing up the situation means she's trying to figure out what's going on. 
She sized up the situation in an instant. Spit out the truth, trap, demanded my sister. Where did you really buy those clams? My cousin was silent. He stared down at the carpet. Well, uh, well, I bought them in the fish department at the frozen food counter. He confessed with a guilty look. Frozen? I squeaked. But you told me they were fresh clams. Tripp stood up straight. Well, yes, of course they were fresh at one time. The frozen clams were um, a special offer. The mouse who sold them to me last month told me to eat them that same day or they would spoil. But of course it didn't take them seriously. You know these sales mice, they always tend to exaggerate, squeaked Trap. Grrr, sales pies my paw, I cried. Do you realize you could have killed me with that poison? You should get a job as a chef at a cafeteria for cats. I tried to grab him, but I ended up stumbling over a roll of toilet paper instead. Why, oh why, had we brought him along? Mis a mystery on board. At dawn on the 16th day of sailing, we were almost halfway to Treasure Island. Dawn is right when the sun comes up in the morning. So at dawn is right in the morning when the sun comes up. After my watch, I went down to the galley where we had stored all our food. That's when I discovered the bread comes on the floor. Strange, very strange, I thought. The trail of crumbs led to a barrel full of apples. I lifted the barrel's lid. Inside, I found five chewed up apple cores. Did we have a stowaway on board? I decided not to say anything to the others. Not yet, anyway. If I was wrong, they would make fun of me for the rest of the trip. A stowaway is somebody who hides on a boat and travels with them, like secretly and nobody knows. The next night, when everyone was asleep, I sprinkled some baby powder in front of the kitchen door. Then I tied a piece of thread to the doorknob. Early the next morning, I went down to check. Just as I thought, the thread had been broken. Yup, it sure looked like someone had been sticking their paws in the old cheese bit jar. Then I noticed the paw prints in the powder. How odd. They were very, very small. Could they belong to a dwarf mouse? I decided to do something before the little thief ate us right out of the houseboat and home. That night, I slept with my lucky baseball bat by my side. It was a present from Sh Slug Rat Jones, also known as Sluggy, an old rat friend of mine who plays professional baseball. If that stowaway came after me, I'd be ready for him. Who do you guys think is the stowaway? I'm really curious to find out. It was one o'clock in the morning when I finally heard creaking sounds coming from the kitchen. I put on my glasses. Then I grabbed the flashlight with my right paw and the bat with my left. When I got downstairs, the sneaky thief was opening the fridge. I tiptoed toward him and switched on the light. Aha! I cried, ready to strike. Then my mouth dropped open. It was my nephew, Benjamin, happily munching on a cheesy chew. Hello, uncle, he squeaked, flinging his paws around my neck. He kissed me on the tip of my snout. Aren't you glad to see me? But why... But how? But when? I mean, what are you doing here? I stammered. I promise to make myself useful, he cried. I'll sweep the deck, fold your clothes, stack your hats. Do you know I am a champion stacker? I got an A-plus in stacking at, champ at Little Tails Academy when I was in kindergarten. And I'll be your secretary, too, so when you go back, you can write a wonderful book. There is only one thing to do. I gave him a giant mouse hug. I love you very much, Benjamin, I said, and I am very glad you are here. Why? How? What? When? Mouse overboard! It was 11 o'clock at night, and I was standing watch at the helm. Everything all right, Geronimeister? asked Thea. It would, be, it would be even better if you didn't call me Geronimeister, I squeaked. It was getting colder. Was the weather going to change? I lifted my snout to look at the clouds, but just then the boat tipped and the boom and the boom hit me on the back. Before you can say, grilled cheese on rye, hold a tomato, I was knocked overboard. I didn't even have a chance to squeak. The boat sailed away from me as I floundered in the waves. Fortunately, Thea had seen me go over. Mouse overboard, she shrieked. 
Immediately, all the lights came on and the lucky lady turned toward me. Trap switched on a searchlight. Help, over here! I cried, waving my paws. The waves were throwing me up and down like a Radian doll in a clothes in a clothes dryer. Cold water seeped into my fur. My teeth began chattering so hard I thought they might bounce right out of my mouth. There he is, I heard someone shout. Suddenly I was flooded with light. They had spotted me. Benjamin threw me a line, but I couldn't catch it. Then I felt a strong paw grab me by the ears. It was Trap. Come on, cousin, grab hold of my tail. He screamed. He dragged me back to the lucky lady. Ben and Thea lowered a rope ladder. Splat! I spat out a spray of water and opened my eyes. Trap was jumping up and down on my stomach. He's alive! He's alive! cried my cousin. My ears were blue from the cold. Thea was holding my paw. Tears shone in her eyes. Uncle Trap, you really are a hero, Ben exclaimed. Really, Trap, we don't know how to thank you, Thea added gratefully. Trap was blushing. Oh, it's nothing, Rattling. It's just another day for me. Don't mention it, he shrugged. He rode away, whistling the theme song from his favorite TV show, X Mouse. What a character. Trap pretends to be tough, but he is a real he is really a total softy. In fact, I'd say he's just as soft as my aunt, Ratilda's homemade cheese. A true sailor always knows what to do. On the morning of my of the thirty second day of sailing, I woke up with a start. Wake up, Jerrykins, Thea shouted in my ear. There's a storm out there. Still half asleep, I slipped on my coat and followed Thea up to the deck. The sky in the east was dark with the with big black clouds. Go and lower the sails, Thea. No, wait a minute. Leave the smallest one up. That way my the boat will hold the seas better, I said. Maybe sailing wasn't such an easy thing after all. I'd better get Trap, I told my sister. He's a true sailor. He'll know what to do. I left Thea at the helm and went below to search for my cousin. The boat was being tossed about by the churning waves, which kept growing bigger and bigger. I opened the door to Trap's cabin. My cousin was huddled up in his bunk under the covers. Trap, the lucky lady is taking on taking on water. We don't know what to do, I shouted, shaking him. I I don't know either, he mumbled, rolling his eyes. But 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 I sputtered, tossing my hat on his bed. I thought you knew everything about the sea. Didn't you say you were once the captain of a ship? In answer to my question, my cousin sat up with a jolt and threw up right into my hat. Holy cheese! I screamed, leaping away from the bed. I fell against the trap's closet. A book fell out. I stared at the title. Learn how to sail in 800 easy lessons. A horrible feeling gripped me like a mouse trap in a fully stocked kitchen. I grabbed the book. The bookmark was stuck at page 11. Lesson number three. Sails come in many different colors. Try to pick one that will make you smile. Smile? I choked. You'll be lucky if you can still eat soft cheeses when I'm through with you. I screamed at, I screamed at Trap. He had crawled back under the covers. I'll deal with you later. I called as I rushed back outside. Waves as high as Mount Everest were pounding onto the deck. Each time the bow of the ship hit a wave, the boat sank lower. Then it would pop up again, this time tilted in the other direction. Trap wasn't the only one feeling seasick. I lurched over to my sister and gave her the bad news about our seriously truth-challenging cousin. For a minute, she looked as if she'd seen a cat, but she quickly got a grip. Who needs him anyway? She squeaked, flipping her, ta- flipping her tail over her shoulder. What a mouse, that sister of mine. A first-rate rodent for sure. The wind was getting stronger and stronger. Its high-pitched whistle could have called every dog in the world. Moldy mozzarella, this is no storm. This is a hurricane, I thought nervously, tugging the fur in the top of my head. What rotten luck to be caught by the storm just now. We had only two or three more days before we would hit Treasure Island. Each time the boat rocked, I could hear my sister, my seasick cousin moaning down in his cabin. Serves him right, I thought. It seems Trap had accidentally forgotten to mention he was never a captain of a ship. He was a cook. Night came and things got even worse. We couldn't make out the direction of the waves in the dark. 
the lucky lady rocked back and forth like my Uncle Nibbles dancing at a family wedding. We were soaked through to our tonsils. The tonsils are the teeth in the back of your mouth, your tonsils. Dawn came, and the sea was still raging. Suddenly, disaster struck. A gust of wind tore down the mast. The lucky lady tilted on its side, and water began to flood in. We were sinking! The trunk of many wonders. Ooh. I found myself adrift in the icy sea. I thrashed about for a long time, spitting out salty water. Monster-sized waves kept rolling me around. I felt like I was stuck in the rinse cycle of a giant washing machine. Suddenly, I caught sight of a little gray furry thing. Benjamin, I cried, grabbing him by his tail. As if by magic, the wind stopped. I looked around. The lucky lady had vanished without a trace. We needed something to hold on to. And then I saw it. Well, happy birthday to me. And to Benjamin, too, of course. It was my trunk. I grabbed it with all of my mousely strength. Safe. We were safe. Standing upright on the trunk, I scanned the horizon for Thea and Trap. Not a head or tail in sight. By afternoon, I was beginning to lose hope. But then I spied two very, very small dots in the distance. My heart beat so fast, even my first stood up to see what all the fuss was about. Thea! Trap! I shouted at the top of my lungs. It was my sister and my cousin. All right. I paddled out to them, paws flying. Take hold of my tail, I shouted as I dragged them in. I really thought I was the end, cousin, panted Trap, collapsing onto the trunk. Thea wrapped her tail around mine. Big brother, I'm so glad you're okay, she sighed. I hugged her tight. Tears rolled down Thea's wet, furry face. Trap was crying too, for different reasons. The Emerald Eye, he sobbed. We'll never find it now without the map. I glanced at my sister. For some reason, she was grinning. Did someone say map? She slipped a paw under her sweater, and out came the crumpled up map. Crunchy cheese chunks, shouted Chap. He threw his paws in the air, just like he'd won two, he wants, just like he'd won tickets to the Super Mouse Bowl. Hooray! 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 hooray. Just then, Benjamin opened his eyes. How are you doing, my little mousey? I asked him. Uncle, is it you, Uncle Geronimo? He murmured. Yes, my dear little Benjamin, it's me, I whispered warmly. Everything is going to be all right. You'll see. 